Ever wondered how pilots can fly through total darkness? No sun, no landmarks, just black skies all around. Yet somehow, they know exactly where they are and where they're going. It's not magic. It's a mix of skill, hidden tools, and surprising tricks. And once you learn how it really works, you'll never look at night flights the same way again. Step into a cockpit at night and you'll notice something right away. It's not pitch black, it's glowing. Soft lights from instruments, buttons and screens fill the space. Think of it like the dashboard of a car, but a hundred times more advanced. Little lamps shine on charts and paperwork, just enough to see without blinding the eyes. The mood is calm, focused, and surprisingly peaceful. But don't mistake peaceful for easy. Night flying is a whole different challenge. Let's clear this up fast. Planes don't have headlights like cars. What they do have are landing lights. They're insanely bright and perfect for takeoff or touchdown. But once you're cruising at 35,000 feet, they're useless. Why? Because there's nothing to shine on. No road, no trees, no pavement to bounce light back, just endless sky. So flicking them on mid-air would only light up, nothing. That's why pilots don't rely on beams. Instead, they put their trust in their instruments. When it's dark outside, the cockpit screens become everything. The attitude indicator shows if the plane is level, climbing, or diving. The altimeter tells how high you are. The heading indicator shows which direction you're flying. Every dial, every gauge is like a second set of eyes. Pilots scan them constantly, even when outside looks like pure nothing. At night, these glowing screens aren't just tools, they're survival. Flying over a city at night feels like gliding above a glowing map. Streetlights, buildings, and cars merge into a twinkling sea of lights. From high above, it almost looks like the ground is covered in stars. Pilots use this glow as a handy reference, a reminder of where they are. But leave the city behind, and it all changes. Over oceans, mountains, or empty land, the outside view turns pitch black. No roads, no lights, no horizon, just endless darkness. And that's when pilots lean 100% on their instruments to guide the way. Your eyes don't switch to night mode instantly. It can take up to 30 minutes to fully adjust to darkness. That's why pilots dim the cockpit lights during night flights. Too much glare, and their eyes lose that night vision edge. It's the same reason cabin lights go low before takeoff and landing. The goal? Keep everyone's eyes ready in case of an emergency. Military pilots sometimes use night vision goggles, but airlines don't. For commercial flights, it's all about smart lighting and sharp focus. Airports at night light up like a landing strip in a sci-fi movie. Every color means something critical. White edge lights outline the runway. Green lights mark the exact starting point. Red lights warn you the pavement is running out. Blue lights snake along taxiways to guide the plane to the gate. Together, it's like a glowing map just for pilots. Even in pitch black darkness, the runway lights lead them home. Landing at night isn't just about eyesight. Pilots use something called the Instrument Landing System, or ILS. It's like an invisible radio beam that lines the plane up with the runway. The system guides the aircraft down at the perfect angle. Even if the pilots can't see the runway yet, the ILS is already showing the path. In fog, rain, or total darkness, this invisible beam is their safety net. It's precision tech that makes night landing smooth and safe. At night, visibility drops, but air traffic control has eyes everywhere. Pilots are in constant contact with ATC, getting updates on weather, traffic, and runway assignments. If you can't see another plane out the window, ATC makes sure you know it's there. They track every aircraft on radar, keeping the skies organized and safe. This non-stop back and forth is what prevents chaos when the world outside looks pitch black. So, does flying at night make things riskier? Not really, but it does demand sharper focus. Dark skies mean low visibility, and it's easier for pilots to get disoriented. That's why night flying requires special training and certifications. Pilots learn to trust their instruments completely, even when the view outside looks like a black screen. 
The tools and training keep night flights just as safe as daytime ones. Let's be real. Flying late at night can get tiring. So how do pilots stay sharp when the clock says bedtime? They load up on coffee, keep the conversation flowing with co-pilots, and stay busy with checklists. On long international flights, there are even extra pilots on board so they can rotate and rest. The golden rule is simple, no one flies tired. If a pilot isn't alert, they don't touch the controls, period. Ever notice how the cabin lights go dark during takeoff and landing at night? It's not for mood lighting, it's actually a safety trick. By dimming the lights, your eyes adjust to the darkness ahead of time. So if something goes wrong, power loss, smoke, or an emergency evacuation, passengers can instantly spot the glowing exit signs. No delay, no fumbling, just a faster escape when every second counts. Believe it or not, many pilots actually like flying at night. The air is smoother, fewer bumps and less turbulence without the daytime heat. Storms are rarer, too, since thunderstorms mostly build in the afternoon sun. And the skies? Way less crowded. Fewer planes, shorter waits, calmer radios. Add in the view, stars above, glowing cities below. And for many pilots, night flying feels peaceful, steady, and almost magical. So, how do pilots fly when the world outside is nothing but black sky? They trust their instruments, their training, and the glowing lights that guide them home. Night flying isn't about headlights or landmarks. It's about precision, focus, and calm. And while it might feel intimidating, for many pilots, it's the smoothest, most peaceful way to fly. If you enjoyed this look inside the cockpit at night, make sure to like, subscribe, and stick around because there are plenty more flying secrets coming your way. Airplanes are full of hidden features you've probably walked past a hundred times. Some are just clever design tricks, but others could actually save your life. Most passengers have no idea they're even there. And let's be honest, airlines aren't going out of their way to tell you. You'll learn why one tiny swirl painted on an engine could stop a deadly accident, and why a hook bolted to the wing could be your lifeline in an emergency. Here are 13 airplane secrets you'll wish you knew sooner. On almost every flight, there could be someone armed, and you'd never know. Air marshals blend in perfectly with regular passengers. They often sit in aisle seats near the front or just behind the cockpit. Their job is to be close enough to respond instantly to any threat. They board early, rarely drink alcohol, and keep their carry-on small. But here's the key. They'll never reveal themselves unless it's absolutely necessary. If you think you've spotted one, keep it to yourself. Calling them out could put everyone at risk. When those yellow masks drop, most people imagine they're hooked up to big oxygen tanks. They're not. What you're breathing comes from a device called a chemical oxygen generator. It creates oxygen through a small, controlled chemical reaction. Basically, a tiny, safe explosion. That's why the masks can keep flowing for about 12 to 20 minutes. You might think every passenger jet is brand new and cutting edge, but some planes flying today first took to the skies decades ago. There are Boeing jets from the 1970s still in active service. Want to check yours? Look for the tail number near the back of the plane or on the boarding door. Type it into an aircraft database and you'll find its exact age, sometimes older than you. Despite the name, airplane black boxes aren't black at all. They're bright orange. That color makes them easier to spot in wreckage. They're built to survive crashes, extreme heat, and deep ocean pressure. Inside is a beacon that sends out a locator signal for up to 30 days. And there are actually two recorders, one for flight data and one for cockpit audio. Ever notice those small metal hooks above the airplane's wings? They're not for decoration. They're part of an emergency escape system. In a water landing, ropes attach to those hooks to guide passengers out safely. They stop people from slipping off the wet wing before rescue boats arrive. Most travelers never notice them until they really matter. Look closely at a jet engine and you might see a white spiral painted on the spinner. It's not for style. It's a life-saving warning for ground crew. 
When the engine is running, that spiral becomes a fast spinning blur. It's a clear signal to stay away from the deadly suction zone, one wrong step too close, and the force can pull a person in instantly. It sounds strange, but airplanes actually have horns, just not for honking at other pilots. They're used on the ground to alert maintenance crews or signal inside the cockpit. The sound is loud, short, and unmistakable. More like a buzzer than a car horn. You'll never hear it mid-flight, but on the tarmac, it's a vital communication tool. Ever notice those small grooves above the overhead bins? They're actually hidden handrails for flight attendants. During turbulence, they grip these rails to move safely through the cabin. It keeps them steady and prevents them from falling into passengers' laps mid-flight. Some seats have hidden perks most passengers never notice. On certain long-haul planes, the wall curves just enough to give extra shoulder space. Aisle seats often have a hidden button under the armrest to lift it up for more room. And in rare layouts, the middle seat is actually slightly wider than the others. On advanced aircraft like the Airbus A350, cabin lights aren't just for ambience. They use special LED systems that mimic sunrise and sunset patterns. This, uh, actually tricks your body's internal clock to adjust faster to new time zones. It's a subtle detail that can make long-haul flights feel far less exhausting. Some planes are built to carry cargo so massive it can't fit through regular doors. The Boeing 747 freighter can swing its entire nose open for loading, and the legendary Antonov An-225 once hauled train cars, turbines, even other planes. These giants are the heavy lifters of the skies, and honestly, they rarely carry passengers. Airplane tires hit the runway at speeds over 150 miles per hour. They're inflated to about six times the pressure of a car tire, but they still don't burst. That's because they're made from special conductive rubber that prevents static buildup. And instead of one giant tire, planes use multiple smaller ones to spread the force. Imagine if, in an emergency, the entire passenger cabin could separate from the plane. It's a real engineering proposal, complete with parachutes for a safe descent. The idea has been tested in prototypes, but cost, weight, and complexity have kept it grounded. Still, it's a glimpse at how future aircraft might handle the ultimate safety challenge. Airplanes are one of the most advanced ways to travel. But let's be honest, most people still don't know half the secrets. The ones that make flying easier, cleaner, and more comfortable. So whether it's your first flight or your hundredth, here are seven simple air travel tips you'll wish someone told you sooner. Let's start with something chilly, literally. Window seats are great for the view, but did you know they're also noticeably colder? The air outside the plane can drop to minus 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That external cold transfers through the plane's walls and the window seats. They get the worst of it, especially during summer when you're dressed light. If you love sitting by the window, layer up or just ask the crew for a blanket. Simple fix, major comfort upgrade. Next, let's talk about what you're drinking. Hot drinks like coffee or tea? You might want to skip them. Here's why. The water used to make them often isn't clean. It comes from tanks that are rarely sanitized properly. Studies found E. coli and staph bacteria in that water. Some flight attendants refuse to drink it themselves. So if they're avoiding it, maybe you should too. Instead, ask for bottled water or juice. Much safer, much smarter. Here's something you probably don't want to hear. The dirtiest spots on the entire plane? They're not the bathrooms, they're the tray tables and seat back pockets. Yeah, those pockets in front of you? They're full of trash from previous passengers, used tissues, food wrappers, random junk, and tray tables. Flight attendants say people actually change diapers on them. Diapers! So do yourself a favor, bring disinfectant wipes, keep your stuff in your bag, and never, never put food directly on the tray. If you get to pick your flight time, always go with a morning flight. Here's why. Delays stack up as the day goes on. The earlier you fly, the fewer problems from ripple effect delays. It's also smoother in the air. Morning flights usually hit less turbulence. So if you hate bumpy rides or running late, fly early. You'll thank yourself.
Let's talk seats. Not just legroom or views, but service. If you sit toward the back of the plane, you might actually get better attention from the crew. Why? Because it's easier for them to offer extras discreetly. Snacks, drinks, even blankets. They can help you without everyone else seeing. Up front, everything has to look equal. In the back, it's VIP treatment, without anyone knowing. Sure, you'll deplane later, but you might get treated better while you're on board. Got a travel pillow? Awesome, but don't inflate it all the way. Cabin pressure changes mid-flight, and if your neck pillow's pumped to the max, it might actually burst, or just get really uncomfortable. Leave a little air inside, just enough to support your neck without turning it into a balloon. Comfy, safe, smart. Let's talk airplane food. Most people just accept the standard meal, chicken or pasta. But did you know you can choose a special meal in advance? Vegetarian, kosher, seafood, gluten-free. And here's the kicker. They're usually better, often fresher, served before the regular meals, and sometimes way more flavorful. You don't need a dietary restriction to request one. Just choose it when you check in online. Free upgrade, no strings attached, more choice, better food, easy win.